Can you help me with this? Oh, sure. Thanks. Good luck. Be careful with the shoulder. Cumulative trauma disorders, or CTDs, are the main cause of occupational injury. You may also hear CTDs referred to as repetitive strain, motion, or musculoskeletal disorders. The principal cause of or core risk factors for CTDs are poor posture, excessive force, and prolonged duration or frequency. The applied science of ergonomics addresses equipment design, workspace arrangement, and proper work techniques to reduce these risk factors. Simply put, instead of fitting the worker to the workplace, ergonomics fits the workplace to the worker. Cumulative trauma disorders occur in almost every occupation and come from the accumulation of physical demands that exceed a worker's maximum capacity to safely perform a task. CTDs often involve awkward postures and forceful or prolonged exertion of a repetitive nature. An easy way to identify with this is to think of the aluminum tab on top of a soda can. If you bend it back and forth repeatedly, the tab eventually breaks off. Additional stress factors that aggravate CTDs are vibration, cold, heat, humidity, noise, and glare. CTDs affect muscles, nerves, tendons, joints, ligaments, cartilage, and spinal discs. The most common injuries cause pain to the hands and wrists, shoulders, elbows, knees, and back. Cumulative trauma disorders involving the back are the most common and costly to industry. Overexertion is the most common cause of back pain and lifting coupled with poor posture or awkward position is another contributor. Back pain involves muscles, discs, and nerves and is most often felt in the lumbar area or lower S-curve portion of your spine and tailbone. Select the forces that cause back injury to learn more. Compression is a force that runs parallel to the spinal column, putting upward or downward pressure on it. Carrying heavy loads that exert excessive pressure along the length of the spine can cause a number of injuries if the pressure is extreme or if the discs have deteriorated and weakened. While vertebral fracture, spinal cord compression, and disc rupture can happen quickly and cause acute pain, in the workplace it's more likely that the wear and tear happens over time and causes slowly worsening back pain. Tension is a force that pulls the vertebrae in opposite directions. When you bend your back, the vertebrae stretch or pull apart. If a load is heavy and you attempt to lift it while bending over, you put tension on the discs between your vertebrae, causing them to stretch. This could result in muscle sprains and strains, nerve damage, and herniated or slipped discs. Shear is a force that acts perpendicular to the spinal column and pushes or pulls a vertebra in a horizontal direction. This usually results in tension on one side of the disc and compression on the other. The lumbar spine may experience significant shear during work tasks that require bending forward or those involving pushing and pulling. This can lead to a displaced or slipped disc or a ruptured disc. Torsion is a force that twists the spinal column on its long axis. Torsion acts on the body just by the movement of its own weight, and when a worker lifts an object, any force affecting the spinal column increases as a result of the increased weight the worker's body carries. The farther away from the body the worker holds the object, the greater the force. 
This could result in muscle sprains and strains, nerve damage, and herniated or slipped discs. Other common CTDs affect tendons, muscles, and nerves. Select each CTD to learn more. Tendinitis or tendonitis comes about because tendons, thick cords that join muscle to bone, become inflamed due to overuse or injury. Tendinitis causes aching or stabbing pain, tenderness, and stiffness. Tendinitis is usually associated with a particular body part. For example, Achilles tendinitis or patellar tendinitis. Early treatment usually starts with ice, rest, and anti-inflammatories and can prevent chronic problems that require surgery. Trigger finger occurs when inflammation narrows the space within the sheath that surrounds tendons in the finger. If the condition is severe, your finger may become locked in a bent position. If your work requires repetitive gripping actions, you're at higher risk of developing trigger finger. Bursitis is a painful condition that affects the small, fluid-filled sacs called bursi that cushion bones, tendons, and muscles near your joints. Bursitis occurs when the bursi become inflamed and results in swelling, stiffness, and pain, and swelling or redness around the joint. Bursitis is most common in the shoulder, elbow, and hip, and often occurs near joints that perform frequent, repetitive motions. Tennis elbow is a type of tendonitis caused by inflammation of the tendons that attach the muscles to the outer elbow joint. Tennis elbow develops over time by repeated contraction of the forearm muscles you use to straighten and raise your hand and wrist. The primary symptom of tennis elbow is pain centered near the bony knob of your outer elbow that may extend along the outer forearm. Golfer's elbow is a type of tendonitis caused by inflammation of the tendons that attach the muscles to the inner elbow joint. Golfer's elbow develops over time by repeated contraction of the forearm muscles you use to straighten and raise your hand and wrist. The primary symptom of golfer's elbow is pain centered near the bony knob on the inside of the elbow that may extend along the inner forearm. Carpal tunnel syndrome is the result of nerve compression in the narrow passageway on the palm side of your wrist. A number of factors are associated with this condition, which causes numbness, tingling, and pain. In the workplace, it is most often the result of prolonged or repetitive flexing of the wrist. Treating early with rest, ice, and anti-inflammatories may help you avoid a chronic condition that could lead to surgery. Thoracic outlet syndrome is a group of disorders that occurs when blood vessels or nerves in the space between your collarbone and first rib are compressed. Symptoms vary depending on whether the compressed structure is a nerve or vessel, but the symptoms related to workplace injury are usually numbness or tingling in arms or fingers, pain or aches in neck, shoulder, or hand, and weakening of grip. Hand-arm vibration syndrome is a disorder resulting from prolonged exposure to vibration from a variety of tools, such as pneumatic drills, jackhammers, and sanders. It affects blood vessels, nerves, muscles, and joints, and is aggravated by cold and forceful gripping. Symptoms include numbness, tingling, and loss of nerve sensitivity. Early treatment includes elimination of exposure, avoidance of cold, smoking cessation, and medication to dilate blood vessels. Here is a read each item and select whether it is true or false. When you're finished, select the check my answer button to see how you did.
Many industry tasks require postures and positions that can lead to CTDs. Fixed shoulder position, prolonged exposure to vibration, forceful gripping, and unnatural hand and arm positions are just a few examples of them. While many jobs can lead to CTDs, workers involved in buffing and grinding, power press operation, assembly line work, wiring, packing, and stockroom and shipping tasks seem particularly prone to injury. Whatever the job, repetitive tasks can cause pain and discomfort over time. Everyone experiences aches and pains every so often, but if they persist or are in unusual locations, report them to your employer. You know your body. Don't disregard early signs and symptoms. Get the help you need before the damage becomes serious and possibly irreparable. Since CTDs develop over time, there are usually early warning signs of potential injuries. Ignoring the warning signs puts you at risk for developing an injury. Select the warning signs and symptoms to learn more. Warning signs of potential injury include decreased range of motion or grip strength, loss of function, deformity, swelling and redness, and cramping. Symptoms of injury include numbness, burning, pain, aching, and stiffness. There are some actions you can take when you experience warning signs or symptoms. In either case, notify your employer. Early reporting of injuries is important for assessing your condition, introducing improvements, and filing an insurance claim if the injury is work-related. When you experience warning signs, think about these ergonomic solutions. Can you shift your body position? Use tools to reduce body stress. Is it possible to rotate to another task for a while to allow rest for the affected body part? Your employer may also want to have a certified ergonomist perform a workstation evaluation. If the warning signs progress to symptoms, stop the tasks that cause them. Consult with a medical provider to evaluate your symptoms, identify the trauma type, and provide treatment. If appropriate and possible, implement workspace and procedural changes. Just as important as paying attention to early signs and symptoms of CTDs is knowing some ergonomic principles that can reduce the occurrence of injury in the first place. These seven commonly identified principles focus on posture, force, and frequency. Select each one to learn more. Neutral postures are those that allow your body to be aligned and balanced, whether sitting or standing, and minimize stress on muscles, tendons, nerves, and bones. Your spine has a natural S-curve. Try to maintain that curve whether sitting or standing, and keep your neck aligned with the rest of your spinal column. Arrange your workspace so things are within easy reach and at a proper height. The power or comfort zone for lifting is close to the body, between mid-thigh and mid-chest. This is where the arms and back can lift the most with the least amount of effort. If you have to lift an object from the floor, remember to keep a neutral spine. Lift with your legs and keep the object you're lifting between mid-thigh and mid-chest. Determine the weight of the object before you lift it and use equipment or another person to assist if necessary. Working for long periods of time in a static position causes body fatigue or static load. A good example of this is holding your hands over your head for 30 minutes. It doesn't seem so bad during the first few minutes, but the cumulative effort over time causes fatigue and discomfort. Stretching reduces fatigue and improves muscular balance, coordination, and posture. Warming up to prepare for work improves performance and lowers injury risk. Many work tasks, for example, moving an object or operating equipment, require you to exert a good deal of muscle effort. As muscle effort increases, so does fatigue and the risk of CTDs. Using material handling equipment, counterbalance systems, adjustable lift tables and workstations, powered equipment, and ergonomic tools reduces the effort required to perform certain tasks. Many work tasks and cycles are repetitive in nature and frequently controlled by hourly or daily production and work processes. A cycle time of 30 seconds or less is considered highly repetitive. Reduce excessive or unnecessary motions if possible. If doing so isn't possible, it is important to eliminate excessive force requirements and awkward postures. Providing more variety in job duties, job rotation, and counteractive stress breaks are other ways to prevent CTDs related to... 
Studies indicate that regular and frequent exposure to vibration can lead to permanent adverse health effects. This is most often the case when contact with a vibrating tool or work process is a regular and significant part of a person's job. Excessive vibration can lead to a range of conditions, collectively known as hand-arm vibration syndrome, or HAVS. Limiting the amount of time you spend using a vibrating tool is one solution. But if this is not possible, you should take frequent breaks to keep your hands warm and dry. Contact stress is the result of continuous contact or rubbing between hard or sharp objects and sensitive body tissues, such as the soft tissue of the fingers and palms. This activity inhibits blood and nerve function, or movement of tendons and muscles. Examples of contact stress include resting wrists on the sharp edge of a workstation, or pressing tool handles into palms, especially when the tools cannot be put down. Properly fitting, good quality gloves and padded surfaces help reduce contact stress. Here is a practice exercise to test your knowledge. Select all the workers who are following ergonomic principles. When you're finished, select the check my answer button to see how you did. you on office work when you're ready to come back. I'm just sorry, Peter. It, it never should have gotten this bad. A after you left, we had an ergonomic assessment done. We lowered the shelves, uh, along with a few other adjustments that were recommended. I just, I wish you would have reported it sooner. Yeah, me too. Work-related CTDs are among the most frequently reported causes of lost or restricted work time. Applying ergonomic principles can substantially reduce the number and severity of CTDs, as well as the costs associated with them. The primary goal of workplace ergonomics is to identify problem areas that might cause CTDs and make corrections in workspaces and worker habits before injuries occur. The ergonomic process is ongoing and should be incorporated into daily operations rather than being applied to individual projects. Select each image to learn more about the elements of implementing a successful ergonomic approach. Employers are responsible for providing a safe and healthy workplace for employees. So a strong commitment by management to prevent all injuries, including CTDs, is critical to the overall success of the ergonomic process. Your employer should provide clear goals and objectives and communicate these to the workforce as a whole and to those employees who spearhead program implementation through activities such as safety committees. An ergonomic approach that involves workers in worksite assessment, solution generation, and implementation is also a key factor in a successful process. Workers often have reasonable solutions to everyday problems that affect them. They can identify and provide important information about hazards in their workplace voice concerns and suggestions for reducing exposure to risk factors and help in evaluating outcomes. Worker training related to ergonomic concerns and injury prevention should include principles of ergonomics and how to apply them, proper use of equipment, tools and machine controls, good work practices, including proper lifting techniques, awareness of work tasks that may lead to pain or injury, warning signs and symptoms of CTDs, the importance of reporting and addressing early indications of CTDs before serious injuries develop, and sustaining good physical health through dietary choices, exercise, sleep, and stress management. The process for identifying problems should include a review of the facility, specific workstation design, work practices, and the overall production process from an ergonomic perspective. 
safety committees, a staff or contract certified ergonomist, and typical workers are invaluable in helping with an assessment of this nature. Both external and internal reports are also helpful because external reports from agencies and organizations concerned with worker safety can pinpoint trends and identify common injuries associated with different types of work. And internal reports, such as injury and illness records, accident and incident investigation reports, on-site medical records, and absenteeism and turnover records show trends that help predict jobs that may need to be examined for ergonomic issues. Interventions to address workers' CTDs include modifying existing equipment, making changes in work practices, and purchasing new tools or other devices to assist in work processes. The three types of controls for CTD hazards are engineering controls, which are the most effective solution and involve physical changes to the workplace that eliminate or reduce the hazard, administrative and work practice controls, which may be appropriate in cases where engineering controls cannot be implemented or when different procedures are needed after implementation of new engineering controls, and personal protective equipment, which has limited effectiveness when dealing with ergonomic hazards and usually involves clothing or padding to reduce impact. Companies should have evaluation and corrective action procedures in place to periodically assess the effectiveness of the ergonomic process and its outcomes. Especially in the early development of an ergonomic program, companies need to have and use assessment tools to determine whether or not the program has met its goals and objectives, and workers should play a role in the assessment. For example, an investment in workstation upgrades might be measured by increased productivity, Another measurement, provided by an annual employee survey, might be overall job satisfaction. Only with evaluation can there be continuous improvement and long-term success. Select each object for specific ergonomic hazard control examples. Engineering controls. Use a device to lift and reposition heavy objects to limit force exertion. Reduce the weight of a load to limit force exertion. Reposition a work table to eliminate a long and or excessive reach and enable working in neutral postures. Install diverters on conveyors to direct materials toward the worker to eliminate excessive leaning or reaching. And redesign tools to enable neutral postures. Administrative controls require that heavy loads are only lifted by two people to limit force exertion. Establish systems so workers are rotated away from tasks to minimize the duration of continual exertion, repetitive motions, and awkward postures. Use floating workers to provide periodic breaks between scheduled breaks. Properly use and maintain pneumatic and power tools. Require suppliers of raw materials that must be handled by hand to package them into smaller containers. And implement a stretch and flex program at specific intervals such as every hour on the hour for five minutes. Personal protective equipment. Use padding to reduce direct contact with hard, sharp, or vibrating surfaces, and wear well-fitting thermal gloves to help with cold conditions while maintaining the ability to grasp items easily. Here is a practice exercise to test your knowledge. Select and drag the item on your left to its match on the right. When you're finished, select the Check My Answer button to see how you did.